Hey everyone, welcome to the middle of the woods. But these woods are significant woods. And you'll see why in just a minute. And there's a lot more to them than what you may see at the first glance. But we are in Finland. In Finland, why? Because, uh, well, there's a lot going on with Finland. There was a reported number of drones that came out of Finland to attack Russian military bases. That has been alleged by Russia, uh, has been denied by Finland. Uh, we have Finland out there uh, just joining the NATO alliance and most immediately is out there provoking as much trouble as possible. And not only are these woods in Finland, but if you look behind me back there, about seven miles that direction is the Russian border. So we are about as close as you can get before you start getting your papers checked uh, to the Russian border. And the Finns knew that this was awfully close to the Russian border too, which is why they built a bunker here. I'm standing on a bunker in the middle of the woods, friends. This is the Salpo line, the Salpa line. The Salpa line was um, a defensive, uh, set of features, fortifications built in 1940 to 1941. The war with Russia was continuing, uh, though it had a ceasefire. They didn't know uh, when the ceasefire would break or if it would turn into a permanent truce. But um, as you can see back here, not only concrete bunkers, but lots of um, trenches, machine gun pits, much of what we're seeing in Eastern Europe right now in the conflict there, uh, we see dug here. Now this stuff is actually even more intense because uh, they basically carved this into the rocks. They dug into the rocks, not just, not just shovels and such. And this line goes uh, for most of the current Russian uh, border, the current Finnish Russian border. We have uh, trenches all along the way. We got uh, machine gun pits, uh, artillery positions. And like I said, just behind those trees back there lies Russia. Uh, as I was driving the highway, it was kind of one of those things where if I had just stayed on for another 10 kilometers, which at over 100 kilometers per hour, you know, like seven or eight more minutes would have run into the, uh, the checkpoints on either side of the border. Uh, I could have gone over and claimed asylum over in Russia. Uh, that doesn't sound like a great plan, but um, could be done, could be done. So the Salpo line, they built this thing so just to be clear, this is not a battlefield. Nobody died here. They did not actually use live ordnance here. This was a defensive line that was built in preparation for another Russian attack. The Russians attacked Finland with no warning. The Russians at the time said that they needed a buffer space between them and Finland for... Uh, <clears throat> For St. Petersburg. Right. With a gimbal, it's harder to point the camera right where you want it. <laughs> it always wants to always wants to uh, change things up. But they built this in 1940 uh, because they had a peace treaty with Russia, uh, but uh, or the ceasefire, and they're trying to work on a peace treaty. And they didn't know if it was going to hold. The winter war was brutal. The Russians lost so many men. They had way more tanks. They had way more <laughs> aircraft. I think I think I saw the numbers for the uh, Finland. They had like five or six tanks, and the Russians came at them with thousands of tanks. And yet Finland kind of won due to the weather, due to the fact that they were fighting to defend their homeland. Sometimes 
the army with the most technology doesn't win. <laughs> Tell that to uh, current military planners. They believe that the people with all the smart bombs, all the fanciest seventh generation tanks are the ones who will always win. And yet, that's not the case. Now, one of the other things I want to kind of point out here is that uh, the Salpo line has long been defunct. But if you were to build a defensive line in this area and want to do so very quickly, there's a lot of features that are already ready to go with this defensive line. Uh, deep concrete reinforced uh, earth here. We got uh, machine gun pits, but yet you don't see the Finnish military out here using all this. Why is that? Well, Finland by and large isn't really panicking about a Russian invasion right now. They don't really think a Russian invasion is coming. And so naturally, why would they prepare for that? They've just joined NATO, which means they can provoke Russia all they want, can't they? Because the United States is backing them up with all those fancy tanks and all those fancy aircraft, just like the Russians had back in 1940, 1939. Before the winter came, many, many Russian soldiers got sick. 60,000 got frostbite because they were unprepared for the brutal cold. It was like negative 30 or 40 Celsius here. I mean, it got cold. So the big news out there is that we have Finland out there giving a major money package again to uh, Ukraine, 118 million euros. This is the, <laughs> it's such a high number. I have to look down my notes here. It's the 25th aid package, military aid package, that they have given. 25th. They've given $2.3 billion, this relatively small country, in just military aid. No humanitarian aid involved in that, just, just straight military aid. And we had this suspicious incident that just happened earlier this week. Russia says that they shot down two drones on their way to Alenya, and then they shot down three drones the next day. Friends, I don't know how good your math is, but Olenya is 1,700 kilometers from, uh, from Ukraine. There is no way that they could have launched drones 1,700 kilometers. They would have had to fly over Belarus as well. 1,700 kilometers. That's, that's a pretty tough pill to swallow, wouldn't you say? More likely, those drones were fired or launched from within Finland. And that is problematic. With five drones potentially launched from Finland, and that's what Russia is saying happened. Then Finland is also saying that, that their long-range munitions, Ukraine is free to use on Russia wherever they want. And then when Putin said, uh, any country that allows your high uh, precision long-range munitions to be used on Russia will be in a state of war with Russia. Finland came out and said, uh, we're authorizing Ukraine to use them however they want, but we're not going to actually use them. Tried clarifying it like that, but of course, that's precisely why Putin said what he said, uh, was that he was going to consider the use of 
and the help with the uh, training of and, and the programming of the munitions and such like that to be an active war. So here we are, just seven miles from the Russian border, a short 10 minute drive, seven, eight minute drive on the highway from Russia. It's very quiet here, very peaceful. It's eerily quiet. If you've ever been up north, uh, you kind of know what I'm talking about, where there's no birds tweeting, there's no, no wind. When you have thick tree cover like this, it's just silent. And in this, the question is, should Finland be more concerned? Should they be more concerned? Should they be maybe fortifying their front lines? Or like they did earlier this week, the United States came and landed some F-35s on their highways because that's, that's a cool thing to do. This is an anti-tank ditch that they dug to block uh, any tanks from coming in. You know, obviously this stuff was built in 1940 to uh, as late as 1944, but it didn't get built after that. Um, they, they kept it up against the Soviets, but uh, they then decided it wasn't quite so needed. Up until just very recently, Finland has been technically neutral. They've been not on Russia's side, but not on NATO's side either, which is why Helsinki uh, was kind of the spy capital of the world. It was where you could see the Russian Navy ships go by. It was technically a neutral country. And also it was just gosh darn close to Russia. And Russians could come into the city Americans could come into the city, French people could come into the city. And all of that led to Helsinki being the spy capital of the world. So we have the, the Finns giving away a whole bunch of money. Again, weapons and everything like that. We have them authorizing Ukraine to use their munitions however they want. There is a very long border. This is why uh, Russia was so concerned about Finland joining NATO, was the fact that Russia has a 830 mile border with them. That's a pretty long border. That's a long border for Russia to defend. It's a very long border for the F uh, Finnish military to defend too. So we have uh, potential drones. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I keep saying this, and we keep having allies that don't really seem to be all that concerned. I mean, say what you will about the Israelis, but they take the threats against them very seriously and they do something about them. It seems like all of the other allies have basically a relatively undefended border over there. Yeah, sure, they have all a high military with all sorts of high-tech toys they bought from the Americans, some of that they've indigenously built to themselves. But really, when it comes down to it, as we're seeing over in Ukraine, high-tech toys don't win the war. And when push comes to shove, who's going to be shoving with us? We're obligated to defend this land now. So is it possible that this will be a future battlefield where Americans will be dying on? Maybe the Salpo line will be hastily reactivated and uh, US troops and allied troops, NATO troops will come in here and fortify the positions again, get their firing solutions, target all the artillery and potentially hold the Russians here at this, at this juncture. Is that possible? It, it absolutely is. Now, I've said it before that the, that the Russians can't really compete with NATO by and large. I mean, it's not, 
it's not going to be conventional shoving match. It's not going to be tanks versus tanks. It's not going to be tanks versus anti-tank. It's not going to be fighter jets against fighter jets. It's going to be long range nuclear weapons. That's what World War III is going to look like. Russia just doesn't have enough other stuff before they have to reach into their nuclear arsenal and start attacking cities, nuclear forces. Now, whether they'll do so with determination, with a plan, with a surgical strike, a decapitation strike against the United States and our allies uh, who have nuclear weapons trying to take out all of our nukes, I think that's the most likely scenario, but if they get pushed, if they get pushed into a corner, they may have to lash out. I mean, should they lash out? That's, that's for other people other than me. I'm just trying to tell you what, what may happen from their perspective, what they may do. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter if someone ought to do something or ought not to do something. If it happens, you have to deal with what happened. A lot of people bemoaning Russia should not have gone into Ukraine. Okay, well, war is terrible in any case. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you on that for sure. But they did. And that's the reality. And some people are like, well, they're going to have to give all that land back. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. I mean, you have to deal with reality. You can't, you can't just live on your little high horse of uh, imaginary morals and, and say, well, this is right, this is wrong, this person deserves the land because they're the last person that took the land. Well, the Ukrainians took the land last and uh, maybe the Russians took it the last now. So the United States took most of the land that we have and yet that seems to be legitimate in most Americans' eyes, apparently. Friends, um, war is awful. It's less awful if you're prepared for it. I don't know what lies behind those trees. I'm not, I'm not some military expert. I haven't surveyed the, the Finland's defenses on the front lines. And, and even if I did, I wouldn't be allowed to talk about that if I, if I did, right? But what I will say is this from what appears, it appears that there's not much between here and the Russian border there. And there's no defensive line here anymore. So what happens there? And I think the answer, generally speaking, is that they're going to let the Russians roll across the border, trip the NATO fire alarm. Then they're going to basically get all of their troops activated into their military bases, and then they're going to fight a maneuver war against the Russians out in the open. Nobody dug in. That's the plan, at least. They basically just need to hold on long enough for the Americans, for the other allies to come and uh, help, but then to fight the Russians out in the open. Now, <laughs> as we've seen over... Uh, in Ukraine, Russia does not want to fight out in the open. They prefer to slog it out, hold lines. I don't know. People said that trench warfare was over. Then along came Ukraine, didn't it? Suddenly we had trenches again. Old style of fighting. Old weapon systems dragged out of inventory. And the question not only was what kind of high-tech new gizmos you got, but how many of medium-tech gizmos do you have ready to go? We're learning a lot out there. And uh, I don't know. Perhaps Finland should be a little more concerned about this border. If you guys appreciate uh, this uh, report from the Salpo line, you can look it up. You can look up Salpo, S-A-L-P-A, I believe it is. Uh, it may be O. I keep saying Sao Po, uh, but I think it's Sao Pa line. Uh, there's a museum here uh, in eastern Finland. Uh, that's, that's pretty amazing that I'm at right now. Um, I got, from, got off the boat from hell. <laughs> 
boat to hell actually, um, as in Helsinki. That's been a running joke with the airlines uh, that, uh, that the airport code for Helsinki is H-E-L, hell. And uh, so anyway, thanks so much for joining with us. We're going to keep you updated on what's going on. We've got some more interesting stops to do along the way. Um, we're going to touch base uh, in Helsinki uh, tomorrow because uh, there's some stuff there that you need to see. Uh, dating back to when Finland was a little more concerned about their security. All right, friends, thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out another video from the channel, there's one right there on the screen. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you guys later. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.